Mr. Leo White, welcome to Q. What's up? How's it going? Man, I am black. I, you excuse me? <laughs> I am black. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm the same color I was yesterday, man. That's how I am. Well, that's the first time I've ever had that answer to that question, you know? How you doing? Well, I'm black. Okay. Well, now I... I'm that's, gonna, I'm gonna, that's been clarified. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark that. Well, it is a radio show. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good to give the viewers a, an image. Well, I just wanted the viewers to wake up. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, I, you woke me up, yeah, too. Right. I'll tell you that much. Listen, I, I, I was just thinking, you know, when I, when I want to go see my mom, I take her to, you yeah. know, we, we go, we might have a cup of tea. We might sing some songs together. We might go for a little walk around, go for a little drive. Right. So with your mom, you're in the show. You're taking her hot air ballooning, off-roading, be hurting. Why, why is this something you wanted to do with your mom? So, well, you have to tell the listener what show this is. They're, they're, I'm sure they're like, what the heck is he talking it's about? It's called teasing it. See, they, now now the listener's going, <laughs> Jaleel, now the listener's going, what the heck is he talking about? And, and you know what? We get to tell him right now. Uh, the show is called 50 Ways to Kill Your Mom. Mm-hmm. And um, a celebrity guest every episode takes their mom on bucket list level adventures to test their mom's resolve and what they're willing to do. And um, why did you want to do this? My mom, it's funny you say that. No, my mom um, was a breast cancer survivor. And sometimes people forget that even when you're famous, you go through real things in your life. And in 2008, it was a particular tough year for her. So when they asked me to do this, I just saw an opportunity to spend some really funny time with my mom that we would always remember. And so we went to New Mexico, and of course the producers tried to suggest things that would absolutely kill her. And I had to nix those from the list. Like what? I, you know, just, you know, harpooning whales and stuff, just crazy stuff out mm-hmm. deep at sea. And I'm like, look, you got a black woman from Crenshaw, we're not doing all this stuff in uh, water. And how old is she? Um, you know, you never tell a woman's age, but she's in her 60s. Okay. Um, and, um, I'm like, look, let's just keep her on land. Mm -hmm. And they still managed to get her in the air. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And um, I'm really proud of all of the the adventures that I chose because I picked them specifically for my mom based on the list that came back of what, what we could do. Uh, we picked spicy foods because I love spicy foods. Mm-hmm. So it was like it was a spicy foods challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we did um, off roading on an Indian reservation. And I mean, the ditches were just so deep. You would have thought you were driving on Mars. Um, and then we did hot air ballooning. And then we harvested honey in beekeeper suits. Is she the kind I don't know. I don't know too much about your mom. Is she the kind of person who'd be into doing this? Did you have to talk her into it? Yeah, no, I mean, the suggestion was like, why are we going to do this? Then I told her she was going to get a check. Then she was like, okay, now she's at least into the idea. But <laughs> then, but, but then, but then, uh, then we get there, and every single day when we picked her up from the hotel, though, it was truly an adventure. She had no idea what we were going to do. And, um, you know, it, it, you're, you're pushing her limits. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I just, it was a very memorable week, and I kind of have an interesting understanding of my place in the business on the rare occasion when I get a chance to just have a good time Mm -hmm. it generally always translates on film I want to play a clip from what you were talking about just then so this is a clip from 50 ways to kill your mom this is you and your mom Gail at a bee farm this is real this is the craziest stuff I've ever done you know what I don't know if I'm gonna do anything else you asked me to do. just be quiet and keep going okay pull that one out kind of slowly slowly there we go there you go there was about a thousand of them right there I'm thinking I just hope these things don't go all over the place and and attack. All right, I'm gonna take it from you, okay? We're gonna take a look at this, okay? Up in the corner here, that's honey. Oh, beautiful. The orange ones are pollen. How do you know the queen? She's longer than her children, than her offspring. There she is right there. There she is, good eye. Right there with the red, little red head on on the top right there. She can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. All these other bees in here are her offspring. Wow. She doesn't have a name yet. What are we going to name her? Gail. Gail. <laughs> Gail. She's got a name. That's pretty good. That's, uh, that's uh, Jaleel White and his mom, Gail, harvesting honey. <laughs> Has your relationship with your mom changed after doing this show with her? Oh, man. Um, I don't know if it's changed. I'm just grateful for that week. You know, you started something when we sat down where you said, you know, you just... 
you gotta have a meal with your parents, you know, maybe you take a little walk with them occasionally, yeah. you know. And um, it was really a week of intense activities. And, you know, when's the next time you're going to get a chance to do that with your parents unless you make a concerted effort to set aside time and do that? Well, I was thinking about that, right? Because I think well, you, you mentioned your mom um, had breast cancer. She's doing all right now? Yeah, no, she's totally remission. I'm glad to hear it. It's the kind of thing that when you live through it, you start to you start to question, you know, okay, well, how much time do maybe do I have left? What things did I not get a chance to exactly. do? What conversations did I not get a chance to have? Did, exactly. did any of this factor into this? 100%. 100%. You know, um, I'm not into reality television, quite frankly, that's just about manufactured drama. It just doesn't work for me. Um, you know, you're not going to see me on Love and Hip Hop. A, I never released an album, and B, it just doesn't suit yeah. who I am. We're not going to see Jaleel and Kate plus eight. Yeah, you know, you're not going to do that. <laughs> so very rarely does an unscripted opportunity come my way that just organically makes sense for who I am. And, you know, this was this was fun. Um, it, it felt timeless, ageless, and... Um, there's so many laughs. Like I'm just hearing that 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 playback. It's just it literally puts me right back in the moment. But you know, it, it, and and like I know you were joking around a little bit about her getting a check. I maybe half joking around about her getting a check. But like, well, you got to get her attention somehow. But I, but it must. Well, women want money, man. It, it, it must it must have been mean. It must have been meaningful to her to be able to spend that time with you too, because she's been with you for a long time. She was oh, your manager 100%. when you were a kid. And well, it was even more. It was more than that. Is you know, my mom's held long held a policy of not going on camera. So um, even when I did Dancing with the Stars, it was <laughs> I can talk about it now, but it was a bit of a family issue going on, and um, a family issue. And my my aunt came to my first dance instead of my mom, and because uh, my mom didn't want to be on camera, mm. and so my mom sometimes can be a little showbiz clueless. And she didn't realize to what degree that they were going to put the camera on my Aunt Diane all night long mm. anytime I did executed any move on the dance floor. So my Aunt Diane was being called my mother mm. because they're about close to the same age. And so everybody thought that that was my mom. So now all of a sudden my mom has an attitude like, no, no, that's not his mom. That's my sister. <laughs> that's my sister. Now all of a sudden she's saying, why am I not on camera? Yeah, I that, yeah, yeah exactly. So... <laughs> I think Dancing with the Stars kind of, she harkened back to that and how she felt. Mm -hmm. And she decided, well, maybe I should go on camera for the first time with my son. So there was a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, first times that were achieved here. I, I'm not into manufacturing drama either, so only, only answer as much of this as you want. What's up? When your mom's your manager, I've heard a lot of times where that doesn't go well. You yeah. know what I mean? Like your mom was your manager when you were on Family Matters, right? Yeah. And like when you were on the Jeffersons before that, I'd say, right? When you were yeah, a kid. I mean, yeah, but she never really became my manager until, you know, there was a lot to manage. So like that, I, I, I it sounds like it worked out, but that must change a relationship too when it's not just a family, it's also a business relationship. Yeah, I mean, listen, anytime the child's earnings start to get factored into providing for the entire household, it's going to topple the dynamic in your house. Like, it really is. Like, if I talk to other parents, even now, I'm like, hey, keep your job, you know, let your kid do what they're doing, but keep your job. You know, if, if, if you lose your job and you just become, you know, uh, dependent on your child's earnings, it's going to affect your relationship negatively forever. So, you know, we've had good and bad moments there because not everything goes 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 perfectly, but... You know, if I had to grade my mom like a test, I mean, she's 90 percentile as far yeah. as moms go in this business because she had enough common sense to just, you know, to lay down certain laws that I always respected because of just who she was. You know, it's to me, parents have to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to parents set boundaries. And I see a lot of parents actually that don't set boundaries with their kids. Mm -hmm. and, and so people were like, oh, you've been, you know, you wait till you, wait till you see your daughter when she's a teenager. And instead, you know, I'm like, no, wait till she meets me when she's a teenager. Mm -hmm. that, that we, I'm not going to live in a house where I'm disrespected because I didn't grow up in a house like that mm -hmm. where I disrespected my mom. Mm -hmm. 
It's, 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 it's a fascinating dynamic, and it's, it's nice to see you and your mom on this show, 50 Ways to Kill Your Mom. I, I do want to play a clip from the olden days, just to take a listen to this. <laughs> Did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? Did I do that? That's a compilation. Where's the clip? <laughs> no, it's a compilation. It's a, <laughs> it's a mixtape. <laughs> That is. I'm like, I'm thinking you're gonna play like a scene or something. No. Nope. This dude just played Did I Do That four times, uh, said different way. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And I said one of them, you didn't catch it. Well, That's Steve Urkel from the Hit 90 Show, Family Matters. Well, this, concern, this confirms a lot of suspicions I have. What's boy. that? A lot. Just, ah, you know, just thoughts I get about how people remember the property. That is so fun. I'm literally waiting on a clip. You just played Did I Do That four times in a row. The reason we did that is not the, re, the reason we did that is because it's I, it's something I want to talk a little bit about later on, a little bit later on, which is just what you said, how we remember the property versus how it how it actually happened in your life. But before we get to that, like I want to know this: when did you know that being Steve Urkel was going to be really big? Because the show wasn't doing well before you came on. Yeah, right? no, no, yeah, no. Um, again, I think the 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 best thing to say to kind of set the table for any discussion about family matters, what the show was, how it was perceived, any of that stuff. Um, before social media, you were the last person to know you're famous. So you didn't know how famous you were until you arrived places. And then the ultimate test of how famous you were was always the mall. If you go to the mall and you cause a commotion to the point that security has to dip you in the back or whatever. Now you are probably like a national phenomenon of some kind. So um, the mall and the release of my doll were probably the moments for me. Do you remember that mall? Do you remember that time you went to the mall and that maybe the first time that it happened? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't really one mall in particular. It's just the mall experience in itself. Uh, but, you know, at the time, it was the Beverly Center. Mm -hmm. You know, the Beverly Center was the one Usher said he was walking around hand in hand. But, <laughs> uh, you know, that's the mall that you went to. And, uh, you know, now it's the Grove. And then I can also remember Penny Hardaway and I going to a, uh, to a Foot Locker in Orlando. And, and that, the ruckus that created was just memorable. Those are, those are precious years. I mean, you were 12 to 21 on yep. Family Matters? Yep. Those are precious years. Those are kind of questioning years. Those yeah. are years where you're becoming a man, both, uh, how do I put this, like psychologically and physically, like yeah. in, in kind of every single way. Hey, you listen, I, I get interviewed all the time. Yeah. You're a smart dude, so I can just tell. So feel free to ask all the questions that you want because I'm getting peppered with all types of reboot questions. Oh. And I haven't been talked. No studio has reached out to me at all. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I have that in here. Let yeah. me just cross this one out. Yeah, um, it's, it's nutty. And it's like, and I have, I have some ideas that about what I think how the property should be explored that's respectful to everybody and takes into account that the 90s was, were a very special time. Yeah. Like, you know, as special as the 60s, to be quite honest, but just in a different way. I mean, people don't even really put it in, into context how much the evolution of rap affected my imaging um, during that time period. You know, when we started doing Family Matters, you know, shows like, I mean, songs like uh, Parents Just Don't Understand were, were you know, that was, that was rap. Mm -hmm. And then by the time the show ended, you know, the death row feud between uh, Biggie and Pac was at a zenith point and all images were gangster rap. And that found its way into Family Matters? Yeah, well, it found its way in our, in our lives. Yeah. Because suddenly, a lot of the things that we were doing were not, it wasn't real. We weren't being real. So, you know, how much life changed from 1990 to 1998 culturally for blacks, mm -hmm. culturally for African-American imaging mm -hmm. affected my childhood, affected my adolescence, what you just pointed out when mm -hmm. you said, hey, yeah, you were at an age where you're like discovering girls, you're discovering yourself, you're mm -hmm. discovering how you measure up against other guys. And really, I was an athlete at heart, too. I loved playing basketball. Um, I wasn't a shy kid. I wasn't a wallflower or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that tends to get associated with nerd, and that certainly wasn't me. So, so was there a time where it was a bit uncomfortable to be Steve Urkel? Um, I, probably around college. Yeah, college. For, for, for 
probably seasons one through six, it was just about learning how to be famous and then accepting the responsibility that came along with it. But by the time I got to freshman year of college, and now you've got this, you're surrounded by this perennial cool. You know, everybody thinks they're cool. And uh, I went to UCLA, and you know, the basketball team was by far the coolest. They were the standard of cool. Matter of fact, we won a national championship that year. Um, my, my sophomore year, we won a national championship. Um, and there was nothing I could do at that moment now to be as cool as them mm. because these kids had grown up with me and now they were starting to move on to new imaging. And you, you were kind of stuck in their and mind. It, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So yeah. college was had its challenges for me. It mm. definitely did. I got back to some awesome moments in my 20s because I started traveling in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you were kind of anonymous there? No, no. That there's, there is no anonymity for me. That's another thing for right. that, that people got to understand is that as an African-American show, Family Matters syndicated incredibly well. Mm -hmm. And we were always told from day one that because you're a black show, oh, they won't watch you in these territories. And, and so, yeah, it's like I can see the way you look at me right now. It's like we didn't, you know, Hollywood wasn't always this Wakanda forever environment that it is now. You know, there was a time when Eddie Murphy got up on the Oscars as a presenter, as a reluctant presenter, and was like, I don't really know why I'm here, but my agent told me I should come down and hand out an award at this place that never gives one to people who look like me. And it was like, whoa, Eddie Murphy said that? You can go look that up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So he really cracked the ice for even beginning to hand one to Denzel, mm -hmm. and maybe hand one here. I mean, other than Sydney, they had given him to Sydney, but... Um, so the nineties were different. It was still very, things were still very segregated. Yeah. Um, and, um, and that affected our, my childhood. So, so do you, do you, do you look back at what you refer to as the property as family matters as sort of a, sort of an important cultural touchstone of the 1990s? Oh, a hundred percent. Like there was just, there's certain things period when you think about the nineties. Yeah. And it's like, that's where I'm honored. You know what I'm saying? Because I get included in that discussion. So straight up, I love my character. Yeah. I'm honored. But it was like Fresh Prince, Family Matters, Tupac, Biggie, Friends, whatever. I mean, like these are the things you think about in the nineties. So, so was there a time? Just but just like coming, being 21 years old, you're not. I, don't, I still don't even think you're really grown up when you're 21. You know? You're, no, you're not. You're not really right. So was there a time when you came out of that 21? You were like, the last thing I ever wanted to be, ever want to do is be called Steve Urkel again. I don't. I want to completely forget this character. Did that happen? Uh, of course. The funniest bit about it, I never felt that way. Other people want me to feel that way. They want you to be embarrassed of the character. Yes, because they've moved on to other imaging. Oh, but wow. But I don't feel that way. But it's like, this got to annoy you, don't, doesn't it? That's why I, said, I thought it was funny. You're going to play a clip. But instead, it was like, I'll just play Did I Do That four different ways for yeah. him. I was like, oh, I've never had a clip like that necessarily. But I'll, I'll break down any scene you ever want to talk about. Yeah. Um, but even when you were like, even when you were coming out of college, you said it was a hard time in college. Yeah, it was only difficult. To, but again, I mean, I had made a good living for myself. So, I wasn't, so I wasn't struggling in college. Certainly did. You know what I'm saying? So it was like watching that evolution, too, of how girls treated me from freshman year to senior year. Mm. By the time it was the time, need, by the time people started figuring out their professional pursuits, all of a sudden they had a little more respect for where I had come from. I love what you just said, man. That's sticking with me. Is that I don't I don't regret doing the character, but people want me to regret yes, doing the character. Yes, that, that's that's what I I dealt with at that age. So how how is it now? How is it now when, when you're walking down? Well, at that the, I think the greatest liberation I had now was my daughter. How old is your daughter? If you don't uh, mind my answering. daughter is 10 years old. Oh. Well, she's nine, but she's going to turn 10 in three weeks, and I have to plan the birthday party, so my mind is already at 10. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, does she know? Does she know? Yeah, and she, does, and, she, and she doesn't care. Like, she knows who her daddy is, and she is a very much an iPad, YouTube, Netflix kids, Disney Channel, generation child. <laughs> like, that describes my daughter. So, you know, people again are like, does your daughter watch you? Yeah. It's like, no, she doesn't do what you did in mm -hmm. 1994. Mm -hmm. She watches what she was. So, yeah, she's seen clips, and especially on YouTube. But uh, but I'm her dad. So it's like, oh, okay, I guess that's what my dad did, and that's why we get stopped when we go to Disneyland a lot. Okay. So that's a, so here's the, the here's the reason for that. I, uh, uh, did I do that compilation? So, so I've asked this for, to a couple of people like you who have been in kind of career-defining roles yeah. early on. Yeah. Even bands, people who have made albums early on and then have continued on, 
Like, so I think some of the reason people stop you is Steve Urkel is more than just a role to people. It's also a symbol of their youth. It's yes. a symbol of their nostalgia. It's the number one thing people tell me when they come up to me. Yeah. And that's where I want to mind doing anything going forward. It's the number one thing people tell me. Oh, my God, you're my childhood. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're my childhood. Okay, from my vantage point, there's no one that I would walk up to or even feel comfortable <laughs> walking up to and say, oh, my God, you're my childhood. Yeah. I just don't mind in nostalgia like that. And listen, I've met Michael Jordan. I lived for Jays. I, I mean, you know, I met every one of my heroes. Yeah. But it's all in perspective, and that's what I've been taking it back to my daughter, where I was just like, she really grounded things for me and a little bit more for other people. They were like, yo, he's a dad now. He's a father. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he, yeah, like I have family responsibilities. And um, um, it just, it was another step towards just accepting me for who I am and the performance for what it was. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's, it's, so that's, that's, that's fascinating. And thank you. Thank you for that. Like, I find this really interesting. I ask people about their, like, their biggest, you know, whether bands still want to play their biggest hits. You yeah, know what it I gets, mean? It, trust me, from that standpoint, oh, man, come on, it's got to get old. I mean, I'll never forget going to a Prince concert, and he didn't do Purple Rain, and all the, all the profanity I heard just walking through the parking lot, yeah. you know, because he was, that's the way Prince was. Like, yeah. he knew you only really wanted to hear him play Purple Rain, yeah. so he would tease it, tease it, tease it, right. maybe do it at the after party, maybe not even do it in that city that night. Mm hmm so, you know, as an artist, he was he was doing things to protect his his right to be an artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and so sometimes people don't necessarily see that I would want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you'd be a fool to think that Prince didn't love the song Purple Rain. He wrote it. It's one of the greatest hits of all time. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't want to do a concert where people were like, I'm going to play it eight times in a row, and that's the whole show, mm -hmm. and it's $200 a pop. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not... Yeah. You know, and just, people would have gone to that concert. And, I would go to that show. And, and just like you don't want to go on every single talk show and do Did I Do That, and right. do Gunny Cheese, and do all that stuff. Right, right? so even yeah. now, people would be like, well, would you do it? Do you, what, will you do it? You do it? I said, no, I don't want to do it because we live in a social media generation. Now. Yeah. So if I do it once, it'll usurp everything else that I'm doing. And that's the only thing that people will play right. in social media on right. this silly little clip. Yeah, right, right, right. It'll be, it'll be, he's back. Exactly. But he's only doing Stefan Urkel now, it's, you know? Right, so yeah. I, so instead, you know, the way I honor the character is like, I was asked to do the, the, uh, the new Scooby-Doo show. Um, they're doing Scooby-Doo and Guess Who? And so Scooby back in the day, back when, back when I was growing up, used to solve mysteries with like these random people, like yeah. Phyllis Diller and the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. I have a recollection you're, of that. Yeah, that yeah, right? yeah, I know what you're talking about. So they just redid it, and it's called Scooby and Guess Who? And it's like Ricky Gervais and Chris Paul, Wanda Sykes, and they asked me to solve a mystery with Scooby as Steve Urkel. And? I did it. I went into a booth for about an hour and conjured up the voice and uh, came right back. I think we have to just a second. What was it like to do the voice again? Oh, it was easy. But what would it, did it feel like? Did it feel like anything? It didn't feel like anything, dog. I mean, it's like it's it. That's an easy horse for me to get back onto. Like it, you know it, what it, I mean? It, no, I would have thought like it's like stepping into an old shoe or no, something. It, you know? it, 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 listen, I've worn the same size since I was in the twelfth grade. So, yeah, so I slid right into that. <laughs> this was not how I thought my day was going to go. I, uh, I, I, it's really nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. No, I appreciate that. You know what? Any chance I get it, that's why I said I could sense that you're a very intelligent guy. You, you, you're deep thinker. But it was like, that's what I like to be able to share with people when I get an opportunity, too, is that it was like, no, this is not going to go the way you think it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Whether we playing basketball, whether mm -hmm. we playing ping pong, whether mm -hmm. we're talking about life, politics, family, raising kids. You're not going to get, did I do that? Mm -hmm. You're going to get something that was a little more, you know, a little more worldliness. That's all. That's what we were hoping for. That's what's up. That's what we were hoping for. Nice to, nice to meet you. Thanks for letting me present that.